everybody that I knew, my good friends, had pinned their hopes on me. Oh, this is the guy that's going to go through school. I let a lot of them down. Walking around, I think about that a lot. You know, how come I did this and how come I did that, you know? Waste two and a half years, there's no about that. Right now, I'm not doing anything. I'm, uh, drifting. Just four years ago, Alfred Barnard of Quincy, Illinois, was an honor student at the Quincy High School. His IQ, 118. An A student in the eighth grade. B's and A's in ninth grade, still an honor student. One year later, D's and F's, failure. Al Barnard dropped out of school. One of millions of American youngsters out of school, out of work. Most of them, like Al, just drifting. In these years of decision, the class bell rings America's youth into high school. A high school diploma is a strong weapon in this troubled world. Most students graduate, but not all. One out of three high school students in the nation do not graduate. One million high school students drop out every year. In big cities, from schools like this in Quincy, Illinois. Quincy is a typical American city on the banks of the Mississippi. Here lives a dropout, Alfred Barnard, age 18. Al is not a typical dropout. No one is typical. But some of his reasons may be, and the unreasoning resentment that made him do what he did. Well, what was it in school that made you mad at uh, everything? Well, I, I was doing pretty good in uh, the 10th grade. And uh, then I skipped school for a week one time, and uh, I got a few lectures on it in front of the class, and that kind of made me a little angry, so I, that kind of built up in me, you know, and I just quit. Do you think it was uh, impulsive now? Do you think it was ill-considered? Uh, yes, I do now. Uh, I definitely need schooling. I think anybody does. But uh, at the time when I quit, I didn't think too much about that. I just thought about getting away from the teachers and getting a job and making money. As soon as you quit school, what did you do? Well, I, I looked for a job, and I found one right away at the uh, shoe factory. And I worked there for about nine months, and I quit because the work got monotonous and so on. Do you remember uh, uh, what you were thinking about when you, when you went into this long period of skipping? Why did you want to skip? Well, I can't think any reason for that. I just... Me and this kid just decided to skip, so we skipped. I mean, there, was, there wasn't any reason. Was your school work up to snuff? Yes. Well, Al, some of these teachers indicate that there was a very sudden change in your attitude from good work to bad work. Can you remember anything that happened either in or out of school that would have caused a very sudden change? Uh, the only thing I can think of would just be skipping school. There was a lot of things that were uh, connected with it, but... Uh, such as uh, when I was in school, some classes I wouldn't have enough work and I'd be daydreaming about uh, the other guys quitting school my age, having jobs, clothes, things like that. But uh, I think the, the big factor was the uh, lecture on skipping school. Well, when you went into this final period of skipping, did, uh, why did you suddenly decide to start skipping school? Uh, I think it just come on all of a sudden. I mean, the guy says, let's skip. I can't remember who said it, but uh, it just happened. But well, there was no reason for it. What about work here? Is there any kind of work that you can get that you'd like? No, there's not. There's not much uh, job opportunities at all. Do you have any notion about what kind of work you'd like to get? Uh, when I was smaller, I always wanted to be a lawyer, but... Uh, I think that's kind of out of the question now. Without a diploma, a lot of things are out of the question in Quincy or any other American city. Towns like this were not built on school. When Abe Lincoln matched self-education with Stephen Douglas in Quincy, Illinois, few men went far in school. Later, substantial 
Families built lives and homes on thriving river commerce and industry. Quincyites thrived with them. At least some did. Others still struggled to raise their standards. And now education through high school is their first hope. Among these people, school dropouts reach their highest level, 60%. This is nearly twice the dropout rate in all of Quincy. Even with a diploma, jobs are not easy to find in Quincy factories. For those without a diploma, jobs are still harder to find. Al Barnard lives here in Quincy's Indian Hills. It is low rent housing. Most of his friends here are dropouts. Many parents in Al's neighborhood did not finish school. They don't understand school. Many are unable to help their children with school work. There's no contact with teachers. They don't speak the same language. The environment favors the dropout. Al is a redhead. When he was younger, he was small for his age. He had to learn to make himself respected. He is independent by nature, even obstinate. Again, his environment encourages such attitudes. He swaggers a little when he walks. That too is in style. But such attitudes, even if desirable in his world outside school, were hard to shed when the school bell rang. The police in town know Al Barnard. They know many dropouts. Al was bright in his early school days. School was easy for him, too easy if anything. But his older brother and sister quit school, then his friends. He found himself the last kid in his group bringing school books home at night. The others seemed to have jobs, at least some of the time. They had money. Al's mother tried to keep him in school. Do you think that Al sensed any difference between him and the other youngsters when he brought his books home? Yes, I do. I think that he, uh would study of an evening and the others were out playing or anything and I think they kind of laughed at him a little because he studied so much. Mm -hmm. uh, how did you feel, you and your husband feel, when uh, Alfred finally quit school? Well, we were pretty disappointed because we wanted him, he was doing so good and we wanted him to finish his high school at least. Did you ever talk to Alfred about uh, back in the times when he was doing pretty well in school. Did you ever talk to him about maybe going to college? Well, no, we never had uh, discussed uh, college. Mm. Ms. Bernard, tell us a little about uh, uh, Al when he was a younger boy in the hall. Well, he was a good little boy. He'd come in and take his naps when he was small. And, uh, and of course, when he got a little older, by the he scrapped around and played with the neighborhood children there, and they had, he had a lot of friends. And, uh, of course, he went to school down there, and the boys and girls would come to the house to play. And was he a pretty scrappy kid? Well, yes, he was, and all the little neighborhood boys liked to come down to see how tough he was. <laughs> he was willing to show them, was he? Yes, he he took them all along. In Quincy, Al Barnard attended the Barry Ann Elementary School. In this school, the dropout rate runs over 50%. Al was the kind of pupil teachers remember. Good morning, Mrs. Spring. Good morning. Do you remember Alfred Barnard? I remember Alfred Barnard very well. Do you recall these comments that you made on his fifth grade report? I have never taught a nicer boy than Alfred. He seems almost perfect in everything. He has an excellent attitude and is very cooperative. He has unusual talent in drawing. I hope that he will always work at it because I am sure it will offer him much in his future. What can you tell us about Alfred when he was here in the fifth grade? Alfred was very energetic. He was intelligent. He always uh, had his work finished before the others. He was a rather aggressive type of a boy, but. Uh, in this room, he always uh, put it to a good advantage. Did you, at that time, have any indication that he might not finish school? No, I had none whatsoever. He enjoyed school. He enjoyed everything about it. 
his behavior. Oh, I thought he was a wonderful child. I, I was very fond of him, and he was no trouble in the classroom. Educators in Quincy and everywhere look for ways to meet the dropout problem and are just beginning to find the answers. Superintendent Lester Lytle, Principal Roland Brockman of Senior High, Dr. Ronald Clark of Junior High, and his assistant, Brant Crocker. Some of the causes of dropout, I would think probably the primary consideration at the moment is the inability of the kid to feel that the school is where he wants to be. Now this can be achieved in many manners, or is, it, is brought about in many ways. I think the, uh, the economic level, the socioeconomic level from which he comes is a very important contribution to this. Most of them come from the lower third. I would say that we find people, uh, the typical dropout would be a kid who comes from a home where there's not a lot of money. And uh, among associates, you'll find many kids who are associating with boys and girls who have not considered school as important as they maybe should and have dropped out as a result of that. Uh, the friendship is a very important thing. I think another thing is the lack of success. I think if a youngster is succeeding, he tends to stay in school. But if he's failing, that discourages him and he tends to drop out. If he has one thing he enjoys doing, he'll put up with a lot of wear and tear on the others in order to enjoy the one. Of course, I, I differ with you a little, Mr. Crocker, on the economic level. While I think economics has a lot to do with youngsters dropping out of school, I think it's their associates and their friends that cause them to drop out more than the economic level. I, I have a feeling that uh, the youngsters do about as well in school as their parents want them to do. We have youngsters from the low economic level who are very successful students in our high school. But they, their parents, I think, have given them encouragement. And I, I think it's a parental problem as far as dropouts are concerned. This may well be. I, I do think, however, that we as school people uh, must do everything we can to see that this condition is alleviated. I think that we can uh, in, instill in parents uh, more positive attitude by our own actions. I think this can I, be an important uh, part of it. I think that's right. And I know that this past year, or two years, we sent these counselors into the home to visit the, uh, the parents before the youngster comes into school, one of the first contact with the parent in the school has been a friendly one. I think we're doing a better job holding youngsters in school than we did before. I wonder if we could talk for just a second about a specific case. Uh, here's, a, here's a young fellow by the name of Alfred Barnard, who in fifth grade had uh, comments like this on his report card. I have never taught a nicer boy than Alfred. He seems almost perfect in everything. In sixth grade, uh, Alfred continues to do good work. He is an excellent student. I believe that Alfred could do anything, and I hope the best of opportunities will open up for him in his life. Straight A's, S's, all the way through uh, sixth, seventh, eighth grades, ninth grade, a little drop off, tenth grade, out of school. Ah. And what, what, what are the causes of that, would yes. you say? I don't happen to know Alfred's case personally, but I would say to you that it probably is the people with whom he became associated with during the summer between his freshman and sophomore years. It's a very dramatic change. There was a day when the boy really wanted to do things in school, I'm sure of this, but uh, I, don't, I don't feel like the school uh, contributed to, to his uh, pulling out of school. I don't know what Al would say. I, I frankly don't know what he, how he would react to it, but. I, I, know, I know his friends, and his friends are, uh, are good people, but they aren't essentially interested in the same things that Alfred was once interested in. And I think uh, uh, today, uh, Al has uh, pretty well joined them in terms of his interests. Uh, uh, although he, he, I know he recognizes uh, uh, the, uh, the thing that he has done, and I'm, I'm sure that in many respects wishes that he had done uh, things differently. I, I, that That's I'm right. Sure. Yeah. One specific thing that he points to quite often is uh, a skipping school episode which resulted in a lecture given by a teacher in class uh, directed at skipping school and everyone in the class he said knew that the teacher was talking about him and this embarrassed him and he got mad. But I, I'm sure this teacher, in, in her own way or in his own way, I have no idea what it would be, uh, felt that she was doing the right thing. This is, this is, I've got to help this boy see that it's important. Well, we as, we as teachers, Brad, don't you think, do, do the same with uh, students as we do with our own youngsters when we discipline them. We don't know That's whether right. we've used the right tactics in disciplining youngsters. I've disciplined my own daughter, 
And sometimes I think I was successful, and sometimes I know I did the wrong thing, but I did what I thought was best at the time, and I think that's exactly what teachers do. They do what they think is best at the particular time. Now, speaking of this case, I think we must admit that there's one place where the school may have been an error. I don't know about this, but unless... I think he dropped out at the end of his sophomore year and didn't return in his junior year. Now, I'm not sure that we sent a representative of the school to his home to see why he didn't come back to school. And I think that's one of the spots we must be sure, with all these dropouts, that we know why and that they have a home visit by some member of the school staff before the dropout is official. But I think there should be, in every a case of every dropout, a final summation of what we've done and what we've tried to do to make it a part of the record. English teacher Margaret Fisher found Al a good student in 10th grade, but he didn't complete the year. I was never able to really figure that out. Al um, was awfully short for his age, and on numerous occasions he would indicate to me that he felt that he was the butt of jokes, and I think he harbored a lot of resentment against perhaps his own home background. Al's history teacher, Arthur Cox, uh, I would like to say that Al had just a little bit of a feeling that the world was against him. I think that he felt that people weren't on his side. Geometry teacher John Parks can't explain it. I have no idea other than the fact that he was absent quite often. He was skipping school. I presume that to be the case, yes. Do you have any notion of why he quit school? I have no idea. There wasn't any one reason why I quit school. There was a number of reasons. And maybe I could have did things different. But I think if someone outside of my family and friends had come to me, they might have been able to straighten me out. But this never happened in senior high. Nobody ever came to me and said, Al, I want to talk to you. Your grades are dropping. So I figured they didn't care. He, he was hard to get next to. I would try to talk to him, explain to him what he was doing his school work, but he just simply didn't have any interest in school. I'd like to get up the nerve to go back and do it again, only do it different this time. I felt kind of awkward at senior high. All the people were different. I didn't feel right as I did in junior high. I was the last of my age group to quit. I mean, you know, I, I, t I took it longer than they did. I worked harder and, than a lot of them did. And uh, when I come back that week after skipping, well, you could kind of feel it like, well, you know, I knew this was going to happen, and he's like all the rest of them. So I just sat back and quit trying. I felt like they know where I'm from, so here I am. You can't do good work if you don't like to do something. If you don't like a teacher in school, you can't possibly do good work for that teacher. Well, it seems to me that if you're in a low-income neighborhood, such as I am, that people, your reputation may not, too be, good, uh, may not be very good, I mean, as a group. And they, like you going to school, they know where you come from. It seems like that they know what they're going to expect. Well, this guy is from so-and-so. He's not going to do too good of work. And uh, I think that's, a, that's, a, that's the wrong way to feel about it. If I went back to school, I'd take the hardest things I could take just to show people that coming from that neighborhood, I could do just as well as anybody that's got all they need. And the rest of them could be just like me. The fact is that Al Barnard, with an IQ of 118, is a brighter boy than most who drop out of school, a more talented boy. Yet with all his gifts, he was not able to withstand the pressures of the social and economic life that surround him. And how much harder it is for the others who are not just like him. Arthur Lee Jones was Al's principal at Barry Ann Elementary School. Well, Alfred uh, came here, I believe, in the fourth grade and was here for one year. 
uh, after I became principal here. Alfred was one of the boys that we have always been concerned about due to the fact that he had, uh, we thought, exceptional aptitude in many fields. Yet in spite of that aptitude, uh, eventually dropped out of school. A terrible waste. I feel, actually, that uh, in a measure, the school was to blame for that. I have a feeling that uh, had we completely developed the potentialities of this boy, that he would have had even more success at the junior high school level and perhaps at the senior high school level. Alfred was uh, a fine artist, fine athlete, very good student all the way through, evidenced uh, great leadership, and I've thought about him many times. As a matter of fact, did contact Dr. Clark, the junior high school, concerning him on numerous occasions. We, uh, I think, could have utilized many of his potentialities to a greater extent and perhaps have helped keep him in school. Of course, that's speculation on my part because uh, it's already happened. It's already happened, says Principal Lee Jones. But he hopes it won't happen to children like these. They are just now starting in Al Barnard's footsteps through grammar school. Mr. Jones and his teachers know more now than they did. A 10-year study by the Quincy Youth Development Commission shows that the roots of dropout begin early, even in kindergarten. One way to change the pattern is to spot potential dropouts before the twig is bent to correct maladjustment, to make school happy and productive and see that it stays that way. Much of the burden of dropout weighs on the schools for dropouts past and future. Welfare Secretary Abraham Ribikoff says one half of America's youngsters between 16 and 20, like Al and his friends, are jobless. He calls it a national tragedy, says schools must revise their programs for vocational training. The public must be willing to pay for such training and for better teaching and counseling at every level. A lot of times I wish I was back in school. Wish I was doing something. I mean, you get, it gets monotonous doing the same thing day after day, which is nothing. The days are long. They may become longer. There's little difference in the shape of time when it's wasted. Perhaps Al will go back to school. Perhaps he can swallow his pride and associate with students younger than he. Return to a discipline now three years gone. Go back to a status which most of his environment considers kid-like. It's a difficult challenge. Al is the product of his own world. If the schools have failed him in not holding him, his world has failed him in not giving him reason to be held. And we have failed both of them. Still we aim our education at that bare 30% which will go on to college and offer little of interest to those who will not. If we are to hold young people in school, this must be changed. Nor can we look upon all schools as being equal, for they are not. They are the gathering point of the problems of the neighborhood. The greater the problems, the more help we will need to give them. One thing is certain. Our future is more linked to the Al Barnards of this world than to the satellites which a few in our society are producing. Societies are collections of individuals. None can be wasted. Certainly not a million a year our high school dropouts. <laughs>